Okay, today's discussion is on multi-axial strain. We're going to talk about multi-axial strain as is presented in my textbook, Mechanical Behavior of Materials, published with Wiley. So first off, we're going to talk about this description, this description for E, and, wh and where it comes from. Okay, so E describes strain. In this case, this is strain that includes both deformation or distortion and the possibility of rotation when I use the letter E. Because in mechanical behavior we're usually most interested in just the case of deformation, because that is our biggest interest, we'd like to separate out and get that rotation out of there. We'd also like to be able to deal with multiple axes, and so we have this terminology for E11, E12, E13. These three terms down the diagonal are the so-called longitudinal or normal strains, and normal as in defined by di distortions that are normal to the, the plane along, along which they act. So the terms along the diagonal are normal strains. And the other terms that we see in the second rank tensor for strain are the shear strains. So those are the strains that give us shear or document the shear that the material is undergoing. And when this strain and this strain, the ones with the, with the uh, subscript switched, strain 1, 2 and strain 2, 1, when they're equal, there will be no rotation about the axis perpendicular to the first and the second axis or the x and the y axis. Same thing is true for this strain and this strain and the strain of the strain. But when they're different, there's the possibility of rotation. Okay? We can also subdivide or relate this particular tensor in a smaller form if we treated all the terms that have subscripts of 3 as being 0, and that is a case of 0 strain in the third direction, or a so-called plane strain condition, so that all of the strains take place in the same plane, we could have a description something like this, where we only take into account the two axes or two dimensions. Okay, so what is a shear strain or how could we produce a shear strain? And we can design that as shown here. Imagine that we had a set of cards or a deck of cards that initially were stacked up straight and if we Consider them initially having been stacked something like this. And the initial dimensions appearing as is shown here. And if they underwent a strain that sheared them from this shape to this shape, that would be equivalent or analogous to a simple shear. Now the simple shear that's taking place in this case is a shear in the x or 1 direction relative to a dimension, or perpendicular to a dimension, that is along the z direction, or the third axis. And for that reason, the du, du is this displacement here, this way, that's du, of an element dx, gives us this particular shear, E13. E13 can also be described by the convention of being what's called a simple shear. And a simple shear does include rotation. And the convention for describing such a simple shear is gamma. Okay, so in this case this would be a, a sh simple shear strain equal to gamma of E13 described by that shearing of that individual deck of cards. Okay, so we can describe these in a number of different terms. This is how we could describe these as far as a, as a set of equations. This is the overall strain that includes rotation. This is the component of the strain that is just the deformation, which is often what we're interested in in mechanical behavior. And this is the rotation. This is, in fact, often called a rigid body rotation, that is, a rotation without 
deformation. So that means we can split the total strain into the deformation strain or distortional strain and the rotational strain. And we can do it by following the, the principle described here. So here we have the, the deformation strain. Here we have the rotation strain. The deformation strain is essentially the average of the ij and ji terms for each individual component of this. So we could write as an example E12 is equal to one half of, sorry, epsilon 1, 2 is equal to one half of E12 plus E21. And the rotational strain is actually the difference between these two terms. So we could then write it as the difference. Okay, so this is the average and this is the difference between the two terms. Obviously, if they're the same, then all we have is a distortional deformation, and we can describe that as shown below for the entirety of the, the two by two version or the plane strain version of the strains that we saw before. Okay, so how does this appear in terms of the rotation and deformation that we'd see for an individual object? We can see that as here. If we had the initial strains as shown here where E12 is equal to 21, we would just have deformation. The magnitude of the strains, they, this would be the distortion from initial square to this diamond shape. That would be a shear. And you notice that the shear takes place without rotation, at least not out rotation of the diagonal. And the difference would be if, there's, if these were just equal and opposite, right? if they were of, of equal and opposite sign, would be just simply this rotation. So this describes the epsilon component, and this describes the rotational component. And this below is the simple shear. Of course, this particular case is for a set of axes where this axis is the y-axis, and this axis is the x-axis, and we can say this is x or the one axis, and y or the or the two, two axis. Okay, so we have each of those cases, and this would be the simple shear. In this case, we have a, a simple shear gamma, which is equal to E12. If this sheared the opposite way, it would have a negative sign.